I will say, I will get to say what goes and what doesn't. And she did not like that. So I packed up and I moved to a hotel. Aaron got back with me and he came to the hotel. I got a job. I was working from home. I had all my equipment with me. I was working to support Cameron. Aaron was with me, but he wasn't paying child support. We, we were kind of talking, but not together. He did come to the hotel. We were talking about getting back together. We would see where it would go, but the hotel got too expensive. So we had to go to another family member's house. So me and Cameron packed up and moved with Laura, another sister. Technically, she's my aunt, but I call her my sister. It was a very small room. I carried my work equipment and there was a mattress. It was like kind of like a basement by the garage. It was really, really tiny. And um, it was always really super cold because it was right by the garage, but that didn't really, and that was in Chicago but that didn't really work out too much because Zach and Cameron was always fighting. It got so bad that my sister Laura said, it's not gonna work out, you gotta, you gotta leave. So then my mom, AKA grandma said, Gabby, why don't you come live with me in Fort Myers, Florida? And I said, okay, fine. So I talked to Aaron and I, and we were kind of still together, but Aaron made a, I'm sorry, no. Cause during that time when Laura was, when I was with Laura, we then were like, okay, we wanna work this out, whatever. So then Aaron made a promise that, Cause I told Aaron that I'm going to like live with my mom cause I had no place to go. And so Aaron's like, cause I guess Aaron's car, it was back in 2020 where COVID was hitting and um, he, his car broke down and he, he couldn't get there until his car was fixed. And so he said, he made a promise. He goes, I will come there when I am done with what I have to be, get done with my car. So, okay, that's fine, whatever. So me and Cameron flew to uh, Florida to live with my mom. Um, COVID time parts were taking, so the parts were taking forever. Aaron just kept telling me, just go to your mom's. I will come down there when the car is ready. My son and I packed up and got on the plane and I headed off to Fort Myers. Um, I text Aaron, when are you coming down? He always replied, not right now. My car is not done. My car is not done. The parts, they thought they had a part and it turns out it's going to take a while and blah, blah, blah. I was getting all settled in. I still, um, I still had my work from home job. I got it to be transferred from Illinois to Florida with no issues. My mom was not young. My mom raised seven kids. This was really hard on her, especially with what she had going out already. But as you can say, a mother's love will never go away. I had to find Cameron a school, a daycare to go to. I was trying to get insurance for him, insurance for me. Finally, my mom told me that my work from home job is too much and that I needed to find a different job. So that's what I did. I looked for a different job. I got a job as a vet tech. I found Cameron a daycare. I was putting him in there and I went to work. He started to bite and show behaviors that were coming out. I lost my job because of Cameron and being aggressive and, and I found another job and I found a lady who was gonna watch Cameron for me while I went to work and it was going good for a couple of months until I got a call telling me to come pick up Cameron, that she can't do it, it's too hard, he's biting, he's biting other kids, he's not sleeping. I went to go pick him up. Um, I came home, started to cry, telling my mom, why is this happening? What am I doing wrong? I got to the point where Aaron was not paying child support. I was coming up with so many different excuses. I got another vet tech job. I found another person that was gonna watch Cameron. And I said, okay, let's do this one more time. It was like a month or two, same thing. I was like, I was like, this is just, this is, this is too much. And so Aaron told me that he's not coming down to Florida, that he has a girlfriend that just broke up with me. Just, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Aaron told me that he's not coming to Florida, that he has a girlfriend and that just broke me into pieces. I would never have ever thought that he would do that to me. Cameron has over, had over 15 to 20 ear infections over and over and over again. So we just saw his pediatrician. He said I needed to go have his ear tubes placed on August 9th. We scheduled him for surgery and I asked Aaron to come down to be there for me and for him. So he came down. I remember picking up him, him up from the airport and telling Cameron, are you excited to go? Are you excited to go see daddy? And when he got into the car, he didn't know his dad. It was like a stranger. I was looking in the back in the rear mirror and didn't know. And you can tell that Cameron just didn't know. He was looking like it was a stare, a blank stare in his face. Like it was a stranger. Aaron said, it's me, Cam, it's daddy. It was like he never knew his dad. And I was crying while driving back home to my mom. Aaron was like, what's the matter? I told Aaron, he doesn't remember you. And Aaron goes, he will give it time. My mom texted me asking if Cameron remembered him. And I said, no. 
Cameron had surgery, and Cameron did not want anything to do with Aaron. He didn't want to be by him, nothing. And Aaron was so heartbroken. He was angry, upset. He's like, then why did I come here if my son won't even come to me? I said, I said, call your mom. And so Aaron called his mom, and his mom told him that you haven't been there for him, so he's not going to know, so he's not comfortable with you. He's comfortable with his mom. And so Aaron just kind of just took a moment and understood what was going on here. Aaron saw me again and he fell back in love with me and he was still with his girlfriend and he told his mom and he said, mom, I'm thinking I'm falling back in love with Gabby. And Aaron's mom said, gee, what makes you happy? Aaron was still with the girlfriend and was telling me that he was not with her. And I caught him in a few different lies until he finally said, okay, I'm done. And he flew back to Chicago and I said, I will be waiting. I will be waiting for you. And then the hurricane Ian hit. It was pretty scary. Yes, I was here for hurricane Ian. Um, uh, we were out of power. We had to store all of our food and a cooler and keep it cold as possible. We had to go to our cars to charge our phones, no TV, no nothing, just a lot of wind and water after it was done. The, or the airports were slammed. My mom drove three hours to an airport just to take me and Cameron home back to Chicago. When my mom dropped me off at the airport after being with her for one year, it was the hardest thing I had to do because Cameron loved my mom so much. <laughs> so happy. But I knew I had to do that because it wasn't fair to my mom because at the age she wasn't, it wasn't her responsibility, it was mine. And I wasn't gonna give Cameron up. It was that last hug at the airport when my mom was in tears, I was in tears. But Cameron Hatt was so little, he had no idea what's going on. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. Whew. I'm fine, trust me, I'm okay. I will. I Early sign. Um, uh, uh, my mom was in tears and I was in tears and Cameron was little. I had no idea what was going on. We get in, we got onto the airport airplane and, and we took off to Chicago. We landed safely and Aaron was there to pick us up. We went to Anthony's place. It wasn't the best situation and I had a lot of an anxiety attack. Just how it was set up and then we went to Danielle's. We stayed there for about a month. Things were going okay for the few uh, first few days. Danielle kicked us out at 12 o'clock and there's some more stories about that in the morning. Lots of ups and downs with that, that we went to live with Brian, Aaron's friend. We stayed there for a couple months and then Cameron was starting to yell and scream during the night and Brian was living with his twin brother and his twin brother worked third shift. So Brian told me it's not working out because of the baby crying and screaming and he's not getting enough sleep. So we said, we, uh, we have to leave during that entire time. I had a job that I was working from home and I was still, I was looking at shelters. I was looking at apartments and houses and private landlords and and nothing. The realtor said that everything is getting denied and we went to go look at so many different places. Nothing was happening for us. We finally had to go live in a hotel. So we stayed there for a few months and then we were trying to figure out where we, we, where we were going to go. I was still working from home. We finally got an answer to this one place. Just the, it's the same place that we lived in when we first brought Cameron home. Oh, comments are turning off. You know, you guys being mean? I guess judge me all you want. That's fine. I don't really care. Um, I was still working from home. So we finally got an answer to this one place, the same place that we lived in when we, when we first brought Cameron home. It was the exact same apartment, um, same complex, and my sister is the one that found it. Laura um, was messaging him on Facebook Messenger. He didn't want to check anything. Um, the company was basically, the company was selling it, I guess, or, or, or not selling it. The company was buying it with all the private landlords. And so that's why he's like, just take it. Cause he was losing it. Um, 
It was a one bedroom, one bath. It was good for right now. It was a home that Cameron could call home. So this day, I still have not gave up on Cameron. We got settled in our new home. It was around Christmas time. I was so happy and, and it was good to celebrate Christmas. I had a tree at home. I had everything and I could just call it home. It was nice and warm and cozy. No hotels. And I'm still working at the, at, I'm still working, work from home. That month, November 28th, we moved in. And it was the best. I have lots of behaviors that we started to notice right before we moved into this new apartment. Um, biting, hitting, yelling, getting frustrated. Me and Aaron had no idea why he was acting like this. We tried everything. I finally reached out to early interventions and I asked them if they can come over and they can assess and see what their thoughts are as a therapist. They diagnosed him with a sensory issue, a regulation issue, a transitioning issue, a speech issue. We were setting him up for a time to start therapy. We went to see his pediatrician. They told and told them what is going on with Cameron. She mentioned if they diagnosed him with autism. And I said, no. So we went to go talk to the pediatrician and, he, and she wanted me to get him tested for autism. I made an appointment, went to the facility, did what they asked me to do. Cameron got tested and it came back as he was, I don't even want to go discuss this because whatever, but whatever. The doctor diagnosed him with autism on the severe side. At that moment, I was just shocked and broke into tears, wondering if I did anything to cause that. I had a lot of mom guilt. However, we started therapy and we started just, we started to help him with his biting, his aggression. His nonverbal was getting worse and worse and worse to the point where he was breaking skin. He would bite me so hard it would pierce through my skin. I knew I couldn't be mad at him after what he's been through with me. I didn't have the heart to do anything as far as discipline because I knew he was struggling and I knew that I had to help him because I struggled when I was a little girl and I felt like my grandparents didn't understand me and I did not want my parenting to be like that and I went a different route, a route instead of discipline. I asked God to give me the strength and the patience to help with my son. A lot of people would probably have done some things, especially with the biting and hitting, but not me. Instead, I got down on my knees and I told my son, it's going to be okay. And that mommy loves him and mommy's right here and tell him and keep telling him that he was safe. I was raised in the, like, I was raised as a Bible Baptist believer that this in the Bible says in the spare rod uh, is a spare of the rod, but I went a different route. It all started in March when Cameron and I were getting sick. It started with me first. I was getting headaches every single day. I was working from home, so I was in front of a computer. So I was thinking maybe it's the straining of my of, of me looking into the computer for hours. So I ordered some glasses to help and see if that would work. It did not. So I was just getting sick. I went to the ERs to get that cocktail because of the migraines. It wouldn't go away. After day, after day, after day, my son was getting sick with upper, upper respiratory, GI, ear infections, runny nose, flu, you name it, he had it. We were just getting sick, me and him. Finally went to the neurologist. I got put on a shot that I'm still taking to this day. And I had, um, I had Cameron see his uh, pediatrician and she was saying that he was getting sick so much. And I'm like, I don't know. The pediatrician goes, do you have mold in your apartment? I was like, mold? I'm like, no, I had no idea about mold and what it could do to you and your body. So the pediatrician's like, I want you to go search for it. And I had a, cause she said I had a family who had no idea about mold and they got very sick because of it. It was the same symptoms as Cameron. I'm like, okay, fine, that's fine. I went to go look for it and turns out there is mold. I'm talking about rashes and hives all over his body, back legs, back legs, arms, bellies. Doctors thought doctors thought it was an allergic reaction. It went away without Benadryl. It was the most crazy thing ever. We took we took him out of the house and then we took we brought him back within an hour and then boom, it happened again. Rashes all over his body. The doctors have no idea what's going on. Maybe he touched something. They household and she wanted to 
she wanted me to bring him in and I did and I showed the pictures of mold and she's like this is mold and I said okay what do I do and uh, she said uh, I want you she goes I'm gonna write you a letter stating that the lease apartment or the, the apartments need to do something and relocate you for your son's health and I said okay I emailed the apartment complex with everything that they gave me from Cameron's doctor. They did not do anything. They ignored it. I eventually had to get a lawyer. It took a few months. My son and I were so sick and I, and we had to go to a hotel because they were not fixing it. And my son and I were getting sicker by the day. I have asthma. My lungs are undeveloped. I have a lung, I, I have a lot of lung issues during this time. My breath, like lots of breathing treatments, steroids, allergy medications, you name it. During the hotel stay, we were trying to figure out um, when we could move into the new apartment. The leasing agent just kept making excuses. She actually said there, that, that there was a guy who came and tested the mold in my apartment. Turns out that was a Pretty lie. Good. There was never a guy. I kept asking for the test results, and she's like, it's not much. here yet. I'm like, well, it's been weeks, uh, and she's like, I'm sorry, test. it's not in right now. The leasing agent told me that the guy told her it wasn't mold. Turns out that was a lie. And then we finally got an answer that our apartment was ready, the new one. So we moved everything that night. It was going pretty good for the first two weeks. And then, boom, we got sick again. Aaron's like, not again. I'm like, yeah, the headaches, throwing up, rashes, GI, strep, flu, upper respiratory. Every couple of weeks, it was always something. It was never ending. And so it was always, it was for a few months. I brought my son to a pulmonologist. They diagnosed, they, diagnosed, they diagnosed him with asthma. I got tests performed and it ruled out. It said I had, it said mold in the air spores um, that were making us sick. And the test came back with four different types of molds, aspergillus, cladosporium, penicillium. I saw, a pul I saw a pulmonologist and they sent me to an ENT. They did a procedure where they had to go through my nose down the back of my throat to try and figure out what was going on. It was all upper respiratory. I had a raspy voice. I was sick. They diagnosed me with a vocal cord issue and a very bad sinus infection. Horrible. I was on antibiotics for three months. And then Cameron and I got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. The same thing over and over again. Wheezing, coughing, running nose, breaking out in hives and rashes. It was just a cycle that would never stop. Doctor after doctor, ER after ER. I was exhausted trying to deal with Cameron's behavior on top of being sick and me being sick. I was still getting headaches and then we paid some professional to come in to, to test the air from the outside to the inside and on the walls from the ha hallway. Turns out there's mold in the hallways. The lab is recommending a remediation. Um, so I called the health department. I called the village. I called the fire department. You name it, I called. Nothing. I told the lease off leasing office, it was like they laughed in my face, thought it was a joke. I told myself, I'm not giving up on this, and I'm going to fight until the day I die. Until the last two months, we were not going to pay rent because they weren't going to fix it. We got a letter from a random guy that they were not going to evict us as long as we left by November, as long as we left by November 20, 28th. A week later, I got in an, um, I got a notice. We went to court. Unfortunately, I had no lawyer because I couldn't pay for, for one. So the leasing office won. I had plenty of documentations, plenty, and I still lost. And I kept pushing. And I told myself, I'm not going to give up. I got a lawyer for the damages, for the pain, the suffering, for the medical bills, for the medical expenses, the medications, you name it. There was an app called TikTok. During the whole process, I had been live blogging my life about it for the last eight months during the whole year i've been bullied on the app my twin sister who also has an account on this app has also been bullied actually more like cyber bullying doxing threatening i've lost my jobs because of tiktok they called my job they called my sister's job they even called dcfs there's 70 reports they have torn my life to pieces at least that's what they're trying to do but i keep telling myself i'm going to do what i'm going to do and i'm not going to give up because i'm a fighter I would like to say I'm more of a champion. Someone in my chat was live that one day and mentioned it <clears throat> about a let them tattoo. And it spoke to me and I went to go get a tattoo on my forearm. And they said, it is said, let them. That tattoo means a lot in many different reasons. Lots of ups and downs. During all of this, I had a lot of female problems. I had to have surgery. 
I would say probably three surgeries in the whole year of having to deal with all of this and what's going on. Aaron and I were fighting and arguing a lot. It was definitely a roller coaster. We got him into therapy. Uh, Cameron was, do my son was doing pretty well. I was working with him so hard and every day he got better and better and better. And I knew as a mom, that's what I had to do. I felt like everything was going downhill faster than I can stop it. When it rains, it pours, right? But that didn't stop me. I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. I have fallen so many times, but I get right back up, just like that Carrie Underwood champion song. They knock me down, but I get back up. I've been praying every day, asking God to fight this battle. There was a dog downstairs, our neighbor, our neighbor's dog. Cameron was so gentle with the dog. Something, just something spoke to me about getting a dog for Cameron and making it a service dog. Um, I don't even want to talk about this because it, it's, it's not stupid, but whatever some about tiktok and blah, 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 blah. whatever um uh cameron was biting babysitters i was working as a waitress it was too hard we weren't making ends meet aaron told me to stay stay home and he would uh he would work um and i could stay home with cameron um i hold on Sorry, it's, it's about the service dog with Coco. That's what I'm not reading. Because we got denied for the service dog, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, I started doing TikTok battles. I had a really good support team. I wouldn't say they were my TikTok fans. I would say they're more like family. I didn't really have family. I didn't have any friends. What I had was TikTok, and that was my outlet. The bullies have called the police on me several times for no reasons at all, just because they hate me and they're obsessed with me. And they want me dead, if you ask me. What did I do to make them do this to me? I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know. The only thing that I can think of is jealousy. I'm a singer and I'm a dancer and I can do the splits at 31. I'm 32 now. Maybe that's why they're jealous. I don't know. But it doesn't really matter, does it? I just kept pushing through. There was two people that would always come and help me. Emily and Anthony. Danielle and I had our rough patches, especially with TikTok. It was a lot of hate back and forth with my chat, her chat. A lot of drama started up. People, people made us hate each other. And then we got back to loving each other again, like sisters should. To think myself, why give the haters what they want? They just want a reaction. And that's why I got a tattoo that says, let them. I just told myself, who cares? Let them talk. Let them, see, let them say what they want to do. Oh, I'm sorry. Let them say what they want to say. Let them do what they want to do. Let them make videos. Let them do whatever and not even give them the satisfaction that that they want. I honestly, I honestly cared about, hold on, no, 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 hold on. Even give them the satisfaction. Never mind. I skipped over a line. We were trying to find places and housing, but got denied and denied because the, inf oh my God, I got to really edit this stuff out here. Hold on. I honestly cared. We're trying to find places and apartment and sister and I Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, got denied. What? Wait, what did I say? And what? This, this makes no sense. I'm sorry. I told you, I have to go back and like redo this. That cared. We were trying to find places and housing. Housing. Huh? What did I do on this? Holy shit, I can't read this. But got denied of the apartment that me and my sister lived a few weeks back. We were going to go live with my mom in Florida. I told TikTok about that. Oh, yeah, because I think that because we got evicted. So we got evicted and we had to leave the apartment. And so we only had a few short weeks before that was happening. So we were trying to figure out where we were going to go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's why I said we were trying to find places and housing. Okay, but got denied of the apartment. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, we were going to go live with my mom in Florida. I told TikTok about that. This is where it gets crazy because I have so many people that hate me and they're obsessed with me. Uh, um, I got a screen recording and screenshots that they were going to stop me from getting onto the airplane. I had screenshots that they were going to call the airlines and tell them I was packing rugs. Hmm. Oh my word. During this whole time, I had DCFS case open for what you asked me? Putting barbecue sauce on my head. Yep. 
Yep, telling people that I, di I diagnosed him with autism. Mm -hmm. That how I abuse him and neglect him and, and all of this and all of this. And turns out case closed, 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 nothing found, nothing found, nothing found, nothing found, nothing found, nothing found, nothing found. Of course there's nothing found. But it never stops, does it? Don't ask me. All right, here we go. Doesn't stop me from what I'm doing on TikTok. Never will. That's the fighter I have inside of me. The bowling has gotten me so numb that I feel no pain. I don't even care anymore. They have ran my son and my family through the fucking dirt. Telling people on their lives that I don't, that I'm not a good mom and all of this crap and spreading all kinds of lies. I'm not the perfect mother nor the perfect person, but I sure do damn try. No one's perfect. We live in a sad world. Does anyone have love anymore? Does anyone have passion? Does it seem like it's, hang on, doesn't, doesn't, what? <laughs> Hold on. The world has gone to hate, mom shaming people, judging people, hating others. What happened to America? What happened to our country? Anyways, back to my story. Unfortunately, the plane with Florida fell through and it did not work out as what we planned. It was to be, I don't know, didn't work out. It was a way of God telling me it's not meant to be. So I'm going to listen to my God and let him lead me. There's always one song that I always listen to and it was called The Battle Belongs by Phil. That was the one song that got me through a lot. It's not going to be my husband. It's not going to be my family. It's not going to be anybody. But God is going to be the one that's going to win this battle for me and my family. And I turned everything to him. Um, I also started doing diamond paintings, turning my content around, trying to knock out what the haters want. Let's not forget my mods. How many mods does it take to get one right? How they backstab you, how they turn against you. For what? Because they're jealous? Because I said something or did something and they took it the wrong way. And then the next thing I know, you're talking shit behind my back. And with how many moderators I've gone through, I finally found the right ones. No, I have not. I thought I did, but I didn't. Um, they <laughs> I don't even want to read this because it's like it's I it, basically I was talking about the moderators and they done so they've they looked out for me and my son and my family, and I can't thank them enough. My supporters are the ones that are getting me through the hardship. It was, if it wasn't for them, I don't know where I, where I would be. It might sound foolish to you thinking TikTok was my outlet, but I have no family, I have no friends. I was a mom who had a special needs child, and I didn't know who to turn to. However, in this whole process, everything is coming to an end. My sister had a cat named Enzo. It was her baby. He was very sick. With a few hours, TikTok raised $3,200 to get Enzo what he needed. And we can thank TikTok for that. Um, Enzo was unblocked. He had crystals. As a vet tech, I was supporting her. And we can't thank enough for the people who donated to save an animal. We finally found a hotel. It was a beautiful hotel for me and Cam. Aaron and I had two weeks. Um, it was the last week of Christmas. We were going to Florida to spend it with my mom. What a way to end the year. Then this is just the beginning of it. It was December 6th when we finally moved out of that apartment and got into a hotel. I was the one that was packing that day by myself. Aaron and I had an argument. Aaron went to the hotel. He was chilling and resting. Well, I had the baby and I had to pack everything. In the meantime, I had two animals that I was trying to get rid of or find homes. One was Rex, my bearded dragon. The other was a 30 gallon tank filled with fish. A couple weeks ago, I tried finding homes for my bearded dragon and the fish. I was even trying to sell them on Facebook Market. I was even trying to sell them on TikTok, but I got no good luck. Then Emily said she would take Rex, but then their relationship got, into the, got in the way, and then there was no help for Rex, and then my sister said she would take Rex, and then something happened with Enzo, and she said she couldn't take Rex, and then it was, it was down to a couple of days, and I had no other options but to surrender it to PetSmart. We called PetSmart. They said they would not take him because it's past the two weeks by that day, by, by the day that you purchase him. They could not take him back, the bearded dragon. So on December 6th, we just moved into the new hotel. And during all of this, I told Aaron he had to go back and he found his cousin to actually take um, 
take the bearded dragon. Um, so Anthony came to meet me or meet Aaron back at that apartment and got a heater to put in the car to drive all the way to McHenry to drop off Rex. The fish had to stay there until the next morning until I can figure, we can figure stuff out. In the meantime, Aaron talked to the guy that worked at the apartment and said, hey, can you take these fish? And the guy said, yes, leave them there. And the next morning, I will take them. Aaron said, okay, deal. So we got to the, um, the hotel. Um, God, this is so much fucking shit, dude. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you how it is because I can I can remember. So we got into the hotel, and uh, and my son's birthday was on December eighth, and uh, my mom was coming in to celebrate my son's birthday. I stayed up all night with Anthony. Anthony was really helpful in in, in all of this uh, craziness, and then um, and then uh, what else? Um, what else? Um, and then I did this whole thing on, um, for his birthday. I had Paw Patrol right next to him. It was a Paw Patrol little birthday for Cam and he woke up and he, he saw what I did and I decorated everything and, um, and, uh, needless to say, um, <laughs> dude, I've been through fucking hell and, Anyway, after the hotel, I don't even know. It's there's so much. There's so much. There's so much. There's so much. I oh my god. I I mean and here I am, and with all the hate, and we had to go get another hotel because that hotel with the birthday party that we had, because at the time, we had no idea where we were going to go. We were scared. But I will tell you, back in that old apartment where they had the mold, Cameron wasn't sleeping. I wasn't sleeping. Our relationship was not the greatest. But mold can do some fuck shit up. And ever since we got out of that um, apartment, my life changed around for the better. Uh, Cameron is thriving. We're not sick anymore. We are, I mean, he's, there's a big change. And I believe 100%, just like with Danny, when Danny moved out of that apartment, I told everybody, watch. Watch what my sister has done and what the difference it would be. Because no one believed me. Mold can do some shit to you. And, uh, okay, so I remember that we had him go into another apartment. So we packed up that night, and we Anthony helped us, and we moved to another hotel. And, again, it was on TikTok during all of this process, so no one calls me a liar. Because ask my chat. They, they know. They, they said this before. They know. I mean, they can tell you I'm not a liar. Because um, I, I blogged it. I blogged everything about my life during all that shit went down. And, um, God, I hated living in hotels. It was horrible. You have no idea. I hated it. So anyway, then the police were called at the hotels. They were trying to track us down. Allie Ray, who um, stalked me. Um, wanted to know where I was um, at the Walmart um, calling DCFS. I had DCFS still tracking me, calling me. Like, it, it was absurd, absurd. And then I had some people on TikTok that were going to help. It turns out they, they just destroyed me again. Um, and they did some fucked up shit. They, this one mod said, you can come live with me. And, you know, at this time, I, I, didn't, I didn't have any family, okay? My mom was living in Florida. But, again, we weren't really sure if we were going to live here. And I know Karen lives in Florida. And so she was always, you know, telling me that if it came down to it, I could live with her. <clears throat> anyway, so during all of this, I was, we were going to visit my mom in Florida anyway for, like, my son's birthday and, and just Christmas. So, but we weren't planning on living there. So we went down to Florida, we got on the plane, 
uh, we had our dog. Co oh yeah, I forgot about do my co my dog Coco. Okay, back in <laughs> back in Illinois, when I was talking about the service dog, that's when we got Coco back in Illinois. Okay, there we go. And I wanted Cameron to get a service dog, but I tried my hardest, and just, it, it never worked out. So that's where Coco came in, uh, and we got her to shelter. Um, so Aaron, uh, we Coco was staying with Aaron's mom while we went to Florida, and then. During all of this, my mom was like, you guys have to go back to Illinois and you guys might have to get another hotel. And mind you, Aaron was doing Uber at the time. I wasn't working. So we were trying to figure it out. And so my mom, I'm, I'm like, mom, I can go back to Illinois. I can try and find a job and get Cameron in school and whatever. But like, we, we got to pay for a hotel. You know how it is. It's more expensive living in a hotel than paying rent. Okay. It depends on how long you're there for so we were like, what to do? And so we were thinking about it. And so we were applying. So, so we were thinking back and, um, Karen, um, and so then I reached out to Karen's, um, Karen's, uh, landlord and that's where that happened. And it turns out we got the apartment. We got this beautiful place. Thank you to Karen. We lived with my mom for about a few days. And then when it was time to leave, we packed up, went to Karen's, lived there for four days. And then we, we got this place. And I called the school, got him insurance for Medicaid. I started looking for jobs. That was really, really tough. I'm still having a hard time right now as, as I don't know why, don't, don't ask me. But Aaron got a job, a really good one. I called the school. I, I took him to get tested, to get an IEP, to make him succeed because I want the best for my son. After what he has been through, my goal was like, once I'm stabled and once I have my home and my son is safe and my son feels like, Sorry, it's just my son's been through it. We've been through so much. And the only thing that I want for my son is just, it's just the best for him. And that's what any mother or father would want for their children is the world. And I do have a lot of mom guilt. We just been through a lot. Hotels, I can't make this shit up, but we're healthier, we're happier. My son is thriving. He is doing excellent, and I am proud of myself because, one, I did not give up on Cam, and it was a fight, and I fought for my family. I fought for the mold. I fought to keep him after DCFS, after haters, after police, after, after everything that my family has been through. And yet, look at what I'm, I'm dealing with at, to this day. I'm still standing up with my head up high, not giving up, still fighting for my son, still dealing with CPS. Until this day, dealing with CPS. Does that make sense? And I'm not, I'm not trying to make you guys feel bad for me. That's not what this is about. It's just, you wonder why I have all these hate. You wonder why, Gabby, why are, like, a lot of people really have no clue. No clue. There's your reason. There's your answers to all of this. I hope it helps. I don't want any money. It's not about that. What I want to say is my story, 
my story is telling the whole world I never gave up on my son and I fought till and I'm still fighting. It's okay. I'm sorry, I'm driving. I can't wait a second. You okay? Yeah, I'm, t I'm reading my book. Oh, um, that always makes you cry because you know what? I feel like you look back at that and you're like, wow, I've come such a long way. That's exactly why I'm crying because of the, the stuff that has happened. And I'm so proud of myself because you, we've been I'm so telling you, you should be. And I'm proud of myself really because my son has a good school. He's thriving. He's not sick. I'm not sick. My relationship is better. I mean, if you've been following me since Illinois and when everything has happened, th this mm -hmm. is why I'm 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 proud of myself for showing on on TikTok, even though the haters, but the wow. true supporters were there with me every step of the way, watching me go through this. And that was the reason why I did what I did. That's why. I, know, let me tell you, I think I could be wrong, but I think since y'all moved away from Illinois and away from all the issues in your apartment, you guys are barely ever sick. I know. I know. Because you live in a very healthy environment. Yeah. And if that house ever had mold, it would get fixed ASAP. So I hope that really kind of like helps you guys understand my life more. You've done dramatically. I've changed. A lot. And that video you sent me? Well, yeah, guys, this woman has done a complete turnaround, not just for her life, but for her children. Her and Aaron's marriage is so much more healthier. I mean, every couple's have their arguments, but hi guys. Oh, whoops. Mm-hmm. That's great. You have grown through this journey. I have. I have. Uh-huh. And there's a lot of trauma that I had in my life as a kid growing up i mean i had i had a, i had a good life i can't say i had a horrible life and there was there is some other things i can't say on here because it probably will trigger a lot of people but um yeah i mean I, I i think that's why it's like i have such a strong connection with TikTok because i that's what I've done is showed my life for three years and I have attached my life to you guys are considered my family, not my friends. And, and I think that it, it got to the point where I was comfortable. And that's a lesson that I have to learn for myself is, and I'm, and I'm learning that right now even everything that's happening to me is not to trust everybody and not to, and I'm still learning because I'm, I'm still trustworthy and gullible and I'm, I'm still learning. I, I, I was really, I, well, I'm kind of writing a book and there's, there's so much to my story and, there's a lot of things that are not even in the book that I wanted to say, that I forgot to say. Let's not forget about Eric, uh, Anthony losing, or Anthony um, having a tire on the way to the airport. Let's not forget about all the usernames, Gabby's pilot, Gabby's lawyer, Gabby's Apple Watch, because I, I lost my Apple Watch in the freaking hotel room. I'm not gonna lie, there was a lot of like good memories. A lot of good memories. But the hate that I deserve, the threats, the false accusations with CPS, I don't deserve it. 
I don't deserve it. I give my son everything that he deserves, a good education, something that he has an IEP, something that's gonna help him thrive. If I was a terrible mom, if I was a terrible mother, I wouldn't, I wouldn't push that. I struggled as a kid in school. And I had complications and I had a lot, I had a lot of learning disabilities. And the one thing that I want for my son is I want him to succeed. I want him to do better than me. If that doesn't speak good volumes, I don't know what does. So that's my story. Oh, Monique, don't, mods, don't, okay, hold on. Carrie was a good person. Don't do that. Hold on. Unmute. Unmute. There we go. I got Carrie. Thank you. Yeah, Carrie is a good person. She's she's been because she she said about the iPad. She said about the iPad. That was funny because she's been she's been through my journey. It's not your fault. It's just like if they bring the stuff that happened, um, that's fine because they've been through this with me. Thank you for sharing your story. You're welcome. No, she wasn't talking shit. She was just referring to the, um, she, she also said, no, you don't agreeing with, you don't deserve the hate. Yeah, it's okay. It was, it was a mistake. It's okay. I, I saw, she messaged me. And that's the thing that, like, that's the other thing is that if you guys, I know who has been my supporters and haven't. And Carrie's one of them. There's a lot more other people. So if you, if you're in my life, if you're really involved with my TikToks and I see that you really do care, then if you do get blocked or muted, I will know about it and I can fix it. But I can't fix it if you don't have that relationship with me on here. So I encourage you to have that relationship with me if you really want to stay here. So I know about you more. And I do care about you guys. I really don't. I mean, <laughs> that came out wrong. That, that came out wrong. Hold on. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not here. I'm not here. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> oh, I just look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> Please don't hate me. It was a mistake. I'm sorry. I did not. But no. <laughs> I can't even. Please don't. I'm so embarrassed. I don't hate you. I don't hate you. I fucking love you. <laughs> Fuck my life. I just made that. Now they're going to twist it. Fuck me. I'm done. Damn. Mmm. No, you're good, Christina. I know you. <laughs> anyway, that's when. What do you mean bad? What did I join into? You don't even want to know. Lots of emotions going on right now. Oh, Lord. The haters will run with that one, Gabby. I know. I know. 
fucking shit. Whatever. How's the weather? Good. It's gonna rain. We know what you meant. I know. I'm just gonna stop talking before I say something. And, and here's the thing is that sometimes with me, words come out yeah I don't really I'm not good with my wording sometimes so don't take it personal okay words are hard very very hard all right oh I feel dizzy oh man I need some water well, here's my lovely breakfast that I barely ate. Us to put our shoes in my feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, that's, that's another one about the feet and the shoes and yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Put your feet in my shoes or something like that. Yep. Well, um, <clears throat> it's okay, is it, is it now? Well, <clears throat> that was an hour of, uh, fun times. What did you say? I missed it. I said, put your shoes in my feet. And it's a saying, what, what's the actual saying? So what's on the agenda? I don't know. Walk a mile in my shoes. No, it's not that one. Put yourself in my shoes. Yes! Thank you. Can you guys help me with my wording? If I mess up, just tell me. Hey, Gabby, I'm going to help you for a 